Hi everyone, I hope you're doing super well. Do you know how rare it is for a philodendron to flower? It's incredibly rare, but that's what's happening with my philodendron patriciae right now. It is my favorite plant in my entire collection. So let's take a look. So in case you were wondering after that introduction about whether or not I do have a favorite plant, of course I have a favorite plant, and it is my philodendron patriciae here that I have had for over a year and a half now. It is an absolutely stunning aeroid, a beautiful tropical philodendron that hails from the Chaco region of Colombia, where some of my other favorite tropical plants come from. Uh, this plant is so gorgeous, so gorgeous, and in that year and a half plus time span that I've had it since it was only about six to eight inches tall when I first got it in April of 2022. This plant has ballooned in size to over five foot tall and its largest leaves are about 13 inches long and they get really wide too. Uh, what's remarkable though is the fact that this plant, this particular plant that I've had in my care for just over two, a year and a half, has started to bloom. That's right, it has a flower that has been blooming uh, and it is remarkable because it is a rarity for a philodendron to uh, bloom out in the wild, in nature. It takes about 15 to 16 years and even longer when you have the plant indoors. So uh, it must be a happy plant and I've been giving it optimal conditions. Uh, with all the humidity that it likes, the bright indirect sunlight that it likes, and the care needs that it also enjoys so much so. This plant uh, is indeed my favorite, like I was saying, and we're going to take it down now just to uh, wipe down its leaves because I do like to do that to this plant quite a bit. Uh, it's funny, with having a plant that is indeed my favorite, uh, I treat it like it's it's my favorite. <laughs> I will neglect other plants just to pay attention to this beauty because I just can't get over its leaves. Those leaves are so stunning. Uh, as they get larger and the plant grows more mature, its leaves just uh, produce these beautiful rippled foliage. And you can see it's just so stunning. And uh, it's very similar to the philodendron esmeraldense. Uh, in terms of leaf length, uh, and this plant just continues to shoot out new leaf after new leaf after new leaf. I've been very lucky to have it in my care, and it's been such a pleasure to watch uh, grow. And yeah, I wasn't expecting it to get this big. Now I'm five foot six, <laughs> and you can see this plant is probably what five foot three, five foot four ish, and uh, it, it just put out this leaf about two three weeks ago, within that time frame, two and a half weeks or so, and it's already starting to put out a brand new leaf as well. So I'm really excited for that. And like I said, it uh, has flowered and I never in a million years was expecting to have any plant of mine, especially like a philodendron flower. I mean, my Hoyas flower, lipstick plants, but to have a philodendron flower, like I was just mentioning, the fact that it takes 15 to 16 years out in nature uh, for these plants to bloom is just incredible. The fact that it would take even longer for an indoor philodendron to bloom uh, and to have this happen within a year and a half, because I imagine when I first got that plant in April of 2021, that uh, it was only, like I said, six to eight inches tall. But um, I just, I guess I really didn't know exactly what to expect with this plant. And I will say for being a rare tropical aeroid, uh, aeroid falling under the Eraceae family, which is uh, what Philodendron, Monstera, Syndapsis, Pothos, Anthurium, Alocasia all fall under. Um, it's just it's just gorgeous and really easy to care for for being a tropical aeroid, uh, surprisingly so. Because in Chaco, Colombia, where this plant originates from, it's so used to high humidity, uh, like 70 to 90% is what it thrives in. I only keep the humidity in my apartment around 50 to 60% with good constant airflow, which is perfect for a tropical philodendron. 
But over in Chaco, the Chaco region of Colombia, it's getting upwards of yeah, 80 to 90 percent humidity. Uh, lower elevation though, uh, 300 to a thousand feet in elevation, from what I read. Here in Denver, Colorado, in the United States, we're at 5,280 feet, a mile above sea level. <laughs> but the nice thing is, is that this plant is so so um, resilient and strong that it doesn't really need those higher conditions. Uh, it can thrive in household conditions because there are moments where I don't have my humidity as high as what this plant wants. And it never cares. It never puts up a fuss or anything like that. In fact, uh, even though they recommend that temperatures are between 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, um, this plant can do well with lower humidity and temperatures that dip down to like 45 to 50 degrees. Uh, philodendron are incredibly resilient, just like Monstera and Epipranum pothos. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited because this beauty, not only is it put producing a flower, but um, it just continues to put out those gorgeous leaves. And as I start to uh, wipe down its foliage, just to make sure that any dust that's collected on there won't linger, that way this plant can photosynthesize easier. Um, I, you know, I really thought to myself initially when I started to see the possibility that this could be a flower that's going to be blooming, that maybe, maybe I will um, chop it off when I initially started to see it starting to come out. And that's because I do that with my anthurium uh, quite often because the fact is, is that the plant is using up so much energy to produce that flower that it, uh, it takes it away from the new growth on the leaves. So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, should I chop this off? Because I really want to focus on the leaves. I'm not a really big flower guy, but you know, the fact that I was able to have one of my plants, a philodendron especially, produce a flower within such a short period of time, a year and a half um, time length. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to appreciate and enjoy this moment for all it is. And it truly has been, with that flower, um, the most rewarding experience in my plant journey thus far. I really just appreciate this plant to begin with. Even if it didn't flower, the flower was just kind of like icing on the cake, you know? And so I'm really appreciative for that. I have to say, these leaves are so lovely. I just can't get over them. They're so rippled and uh, I don't know. It's just foliage is what really does it for me with a plant. It's not so much the flowers, it's the foliage. So this plant in particular, the Philodendron patriciae, was discovered by a very, very well-known botanist and uh, plant researcher, Dr. Thomas Grote. And this plant didn't really have a uh, specific or uh, scientific name. It was known or, you know, in a, in a sense, known as the Philodendron um, splendidum, S-P-L-E-N-D-I-D-U-M. Splendid it up. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what it went by and was known up until 2010 when uh, Dr. Thomas Grote um, gave it its scientific name after discovering it. And he named it the Philodendron Patriciae. Um, and you pronounce Patriciae like you would with aeroid, Araceae. So Patriciae. Uh, and he named it after his wife, Patricia, which I think is really cute. Um, and so that was in 2010. So here we are in 2023 and, you know, only 13 years after him naming it, this plant is just so, so gorgeous. Uh, and, you know, I got this, like I said, in April of 2022. And I got it from a, a rare plant shop here in Denver. And at the time when I got it for that, it was six to eight inches uh, tall. The plant cost me, I think it was like $650, $650 for such a small plant that really only went up to like about here. And uh, look at how big this thing has grown in that time. Now, mind you, I would not spend money like that on a plant these days. Uh, that expensive, but I will say if I had to travel back in time and decide not to do it, 
I would still do it in a harpy because this plant was has been worth every single penny and then some um, with the amount of joy that has brought me because it's been such a pleasure to watch grow during that time span and I have to say I just really really appreciate this plant and I really enjoy its beauty and uh, the amount of ease and uh, just how nice it's been to actually just be able to grow in my conditions. Like I said, here in Denver, Colorado, you know, we're at a very high elevation and we don't really have great humidity here in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so even when humidity, my humidifiers aren't on and my conditions aren't as optimal as I really would like for them to be, this plant never puts up um, an issue with it. It just continues to thrive. And quite frankly, if you are a rare plant collector or you just really like plants just to begin with, the fact that it doesn't put up a fight during a situation like that is really just a really great uh, situation to be in with plants. And I have to say, uh, another philodendron that really never causes any issues like this is uh, the philodendron Billetia, which is my other favorite philodendron. Um, I had a philodendron, and I still do, a Billetia that grew leaves that were 25 inches long. And I got it as a small plant, just like I did with the Patricia. And I think I got the Billetia first. Yeah, I probably got that in. November or December of 2021, because I got it around the same time as I got my uh, philodendron Araba apotensia. I think I got them within the Billetier and the Araba within um, a month or a couple of weeks of one another. And those things just took off. I mean, that Billetier grew to be this size. Like I said, it's leaves over two feet long. And um, I ended up having to chop it up because. I don't have a ton of space in my apartment. And so uh, chopping it up and propagating it and then turning it into a bunch of uh, different cuttings and individual plants. In fact, I have a couple of the cuttings right over here. I have this baby, which is one of the Billetier cuttings that I'm referring to here. This is one of the smaller leaves and that's probably about 16 to 18 inches long. But this plant is another easy to care for, rare tropical aeroid, and uh, hands down one of the easiest and most fun and beautiful plants that I've had the pleasure of uh, being able to care for and have in my uh, environment. Another one of those Billetier cuttings that I uh, chopped up and water propagated is right over here. And uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to start repotting this guy because he already has some new roots that are growing out. Aw, this is one of the bigger leaves. I was saying aw, because this plant has not produced any new leaves since I potted it up months ago. And I just realized and noticed that it's got a fresh new little growth point coming in. So I'm really excited for that. This plant was so is so weird though, because it kind of like, it's uh, a petiole and stem, like it just kind of like they move around so much. They're such an active plant. It's very, very fascinating to watch and grow. Uh, so I made a bunch of cuttings of my billetier, gave a bunch away to friends and loved ones. And then I made myself about, I don't know, six or eight cuttings of this plant because it is one of my favorites, hands down. Um, and I thought about cutting this guy up too, or this gal, I should say, Patricia, but I just can't, I can't do it. I just, I don't know. It's too, even if I don't have the space, it's just like, it's such a beautiful plan. I just can't, I can't see myself cutting it up yet. Um, and it also, what's nice about it is that it, its size that has grown, it continues to just grow tall and those leaves just kind of hang over. Whereas the billetier was like branching out all over the place, you know? So I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I'm just going to stick to um, having this one as it is. You'll notice like some of these leaves down here are really big and then they got shorter like around here and then they started growing large again. That's because around this time frame is when 
I repotted it and put it into a larger pot. And so, of course, you know, the plant's going through shock and its, its growth is going to be stunted because of that um, repotting situation. But it um, continued to thrive as soon as I started uh, potting it up into this new pot, this larger pot, and it's been doing really well since then. So I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, you know, um, I have another philodendron. Why is its name? It's right above my kitchen. Why is its name not coming to me right now? Um, if I remember it, I'll put it on the screen. But it has really long, beautiful leaves. Um, not as long as this one, but that's because it's a smaller plant. Um, I've only had it for about, I think, a year now. Um, which isn't too much longer than I've had the Patricia, but still, um, why I'm bringing that one up is because it started to produce a um, little bloom, a little uh, flower, and then it just, uh, I didn't, I wasn't watering it. And so apparently, apparently, that if you don't water plants, they don't do well. Who knew? <laughs> but I had it hanging uh, high up above in my, living room and my living room and my apartment ceilings are 22 feet tall and so i just wouldn't get to it long uh enough and it's not the sort of philodendron that you need to water it all the time um in fact i think i would let it go sometimes three weeks without watering it and the foliage would still look really great um but the flower it needed water to bloom according to science but who knows whether or not science is accurate just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, um, when I started to see that it was potentially about to bloom, it was too late, and I really kicked myself. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I noticed the um, uh, flower coming out of the Patricia. So I sent a photo to my buddy Pedro, uh, who's so brilliant when it comes to plants. And um, he, I sent a picture to him, and he's like, yeah, you know, uh, that looks like it's going to be a flower. And so, you know, I'm like, well, I don't know if this is going to happen. And so I listened to what he said, which was to make sure it's watered, make sure it has really nice, bright, indirect light, and uh, see if anything happens. And sure enough, it did. <laughs> and I'm so excited for that because it's just been such a pleasure to watch. And I am very curious, though, because I've never dealt with a or had a philodendron flower. The only plants that I've had flower like are my Hoyas and my lipstick plants. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've never taken the seeds from a plant flower and potted them up or anything like that to see how you can grow a new plant. Uh, so I'm curious to know if any of you have ever had a philodendron or any other uh, plant like a flowering tropical aeroid uh, flower. I'm curious to know, what do you do once it flowers? Do you actually keep the seeds, pot them up into soil, or do you just let them be, look at the spathe and spadex and be like, oh, that's pretty, you know, in an alien type way, and just let it be? Or what do you guys do? I'm curious to know, because I'd really be interested to know whether or not I should um, cut off that flower and take its seeds out and try potting it up because I've never experienced this before. So any advice that you guys have, please leave it in the comment section below because I read through all of your comments. Uh, usually as soon as they come in, I see them and then I read them and respond to them right away. So please, please, please give me some advice. I need it. <laughs> uh, but I'm really excited um, to see what this plant's future will look like. And I'm not even sure, like, I've been wanting to get rid of this plant for a couple of months now. And it's funny that I say that because I just told you guys like how much it is my favorite plant, which it is. But at the same time, for those of you who are plant collectors and have had plants for a while, you guys also know that, you know, after, after a, a minute of having plants, especially for like a year and a half, and when they get as large as this one has, uh, you know, it's not always like the most ideal situation to have this plant around. And I think to myself, well, you know, I've had such a wonderful time being able to grow it and watch it grow that I'd really like for somebody else to have that experience, especially if they are really passionate about plants. So I think now that I have experienced it flowering, there's really nothing else I can accomplish with this plant other than to see it continue to grow larger and larger in size. So 
um, yeah, I might uh, be selling it to someone here in Denver, in the Denver region or Colorado area, if they're interested. So, yeah, I used to, you know, um, chop up and propagate and sell a lot of my plants in the past, but I stopped doing that after a while. And um, just because it's just such a tedious um situation when you're kind of just like waiting to see whether or not somebody's going to come and get your plant and all that good stuff so yeah i stopped water propagating and selling off plants a while back but in this situation it's not really a propagation at all it's just a very large healthy beautiful beautiful tropical plant and yeah i'm really excited and hope that hopefully whoever takes ownership of this plant next will really enjoy watching it thrive and have the same experience that I've been so fortunate to have with this plant. Uh, it had some little leaves on the bottom part when I first got it, but a couple of them died off uh, just because the plant itself was looking to transfer its energy over to new foliage. So of course, like any uh, genus or family of plants, they will look to kill off uh, you know, they're smaller leaves that have been around for a longer period of time just so they can focus on uh, the new foliage and energy and the plant's leaves coming out. And yeah, I think that, I think that does it for this guy. Now he's all cleaned off. Oh, so beautiful. I always see like these, uh, <laughs> little drops coming out from the extra floor extra floral nectaries and uh i'm like should i wipe that off or should i not what should i do i'm just so indecisive really but yeah what a beauty i'm so fortunate to be able to have experienced this plant and it has been such a joy to be able to watch bloom and grow and yeah this has brought me so much happiness. And so have you guys. For tuning into my YouTube channel, check out my videos. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more fun, plenty content just like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.